no question that climate change adaptation is a multi-sectoral uh, approach. We're working in very close cooperation with partner organizations, uh, including UNDP, uh, IUCN, uh, FAO, and others. Um, and I think there's a good reason for that from the scientific basis. Um, adaptation is not just a climate question or the World Meteorological Organization could handle it. It's also about the impacts of climate change, impacts on the environment, and impacts on society. So that's why, why UNEP and UNDP might, might need to be involved in these questions. At least my perception from projects that come through UNEP is roughly a thousand times more money is available for projects at the local level than is available for international, global kind of uh, actions. So we're very, very heavily dominated now uh, towards local action. Adaptation is not a global problem in a sense. You, you adapt to local climate changes and you have local vulnerabilities, so you've got to have local projects. Uh, this said, I think the thousand to one ratio is probably a little too high. Uh, I do think there's room for a better uh, global network, say, global, a, a mechanism for say sharing uh, protocols for observation so that we can ensure that uh, different observing systems which are both observing the climate change and observing the adaptation the impacts of adaptation measures uh, can be done using standard protocols say there's also room for uh, multilateral global network for sharing best practices for avoiding worst practices so um, I, I, I think there is some room for a shit a more international, multilateral, global action on climate change. But it has to be done very carefully. I'm not in favor of global governance of adaptation. That's a word some people use. Uh, we can't, there's no mechanism with teeth that countries really have engagement in which would allow us to govern adaptation globally. Uh, clearly that's uh, mostly a national level thing. Also action to finance. Uh, there's strong pressure from member states, understandably so, to have national level access to, to uh, adaptation finance. And that's another thing I think is a positive direction. To make a long story short, I think we have to have adaptation action on all levels. On the international level, for multilateral, global action, uh, sharing, uh, on a governmental level, a national level, but very importantly also on the, on the local level, which is where uh, the most vulnerable people are not, it's not, uh, the vulnerability does not map with national boundaries. Lessons learned so far, well, it's hard to put your finger on uh, success stories in, in adaptation, so we're pretty early going to say I've learned some lessons. Uh, there are some successes um, f that we can point to which are high-tech, building seawalls or movable gates uh, around Venice, uh, building floating houses in uh, the Netherlands, uh, the London Thames barrier. Uh, so you, you might be tempted to say, well, that's lesson learned. Let's build some more of these trillion dollar uh, barriers. But the fact of the matter is that you can't upscale that kind of solution to the vast majority of the world's coast. There are other ecosystem-based approaches like protecting your coral reefs, protecting your mangroves, which uh, provide sort of a much better bang for your buck, it, and both in terms of being more affordable for large sections of coast to, to reduce vulnerability to sea level rise, and also uh, to deliver multiple benefits. Because they're not just protecting you from sea level rise, but they're also adding to your biodiversity, providing ecosystem services, and so forth.